So we're gonna get started here. We're doing another scary stories this time. Scary stories number 11. Look at this regular size clipboard first on my massive hands. We recorded these yesterday, but you could hear everybody talking in the background. No, Monica just didn't like how she looked. And I was gonna say that next. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, this is our haunted garage. Oh yeah, girl, the only thing I'm scared of is spiders right here. Ghost tube. So this thing detects electromagnetic energy and it can be manipulated by whatever. Okay, so you can speak into this. Because there's been activity. I'm scared now. Dun, dun, dun. You're really scared. I'm anxiety. Alright. Oh my god. Wait, can I hear that? first? It said something. Bloody. I'm on my damn period. It said that when we were at the Wayfarer Church. Look. Then this is fake as f. Stop f. Get the f away from here. <laughs> Uh, these are gonna be about brujas too. Okay, this person says, this is a story for your video. I think I need help. I feel like I'm in catfish. Yeah, you are a catfish. Ever since I was little, I've had this mental tie to my great-grandmother that I never got to meet. Like, for some reason, I always knew she was there and I just felt a presence. I think the thing that tied me to her was that my family didn't expect my mom to have children because she was considered too old to have kids. But she ended up becoming pregnant with me. She was literally on her way to tell my great-grandma that she was pregnant with me, but learned that she had died that day. All of my family said that she would have loved me if she saw me now, but I never really paid attention to it because, to be honest, I didn't really care. As you should. The odd part is that ever since I was around five years old, I was able to get rid of my physical pain. And when I got my period, I was able to stop my period cramps without medicine and just resting my hand on my stomach. I could get rid of growing pains, headaches, migraines, and other things. One instant of this is when I was on a hike and broke two of my fingers from falling on a rock. I wrapped them in my other hand and just thought of the pain going away and it would leave. The part that confuses me is that no one in my family has any tie to healing or witchcraft besides my great grandma. You know what this story reminds me of? Switchcraft. What's that? I'm very glad you asked. <laughs> Switchcraft is a mobile game where you play as a witch named Bailey whose best friend goes missing during a ritual at their witchcraft academy. As you play the game, you're rewarded with crystals that you use to unravel the immersive mystery of the disappearance of our comadre, Lydia. The hand-painted visuals and the music are so pretty, it looks like a graphic novel that's playing out like a movie as you go along. My favorite part is it's a choose-your-own-adventure story, which are my favorite types of games. So the 85 plus diverse characters, which includes representation of POC, LGBTQ plus representation, and disabled representation react to your choices. You can play all day because it's got thousands of magical match three levels. I feel like crying. I just won. Why do I feel like crying? What? It's free in the app store, so you can help the channel out and download the link in the description. And most importantly, let me know who you think is responsible for the disappearance of Lydia. Personally, I think it's the Chancellor. Why is this guy so concerned? Tell me where the f*** she is. Alright, are you done? She thick. I know this game is so cool, but we need to get back to the video, sister. I just called him a dork on accident. <gasps> I hurt his feelings! You're gonna go missing next in real life. What? This is the part that I'm actually very scared about and need help with. I moved into my house about two years ago, and ever since that, I've felt spirits in this house nonstop. One night, I was laying in bed with my dog at around 2 in the morning, watching movies. Then I start to feel the hair on the back of my neck stand up. I brushed it off until my dog started growling and barking at the corner of my room. She started shaking and whining. I tried to calm her down, but she wouldn't. She ran to my door with her tail in between her legs, so I opened it for her. But she just stood there, looking out of my door into the hallway for about two minutes before finally leaving. After my dog left, I finally calmed down, but I still felt something staring at me but I decided to go to sleep. I woke up at around 8 from text from my mom saying, what the hell did you do to the dog? She hasn't stopped shaking since she came down here. And that was when I started to freak out. I explained everything that happened to my mom and she contacted her friend who is a medium. Her friend said that it was my great grandmother. She apparently came to check on me because she had a bad feeling about something. I felt relieved that it was her and she didn't mean any harm. So now she just comes every weekend. The reason I know it's her is because she has this type of aura that is very welcoming and sweet. And now I have it memorized. Now, a week ago, I was trying to fall asleep when I felt someone behind me. I thought it was her, but then I started to hear my name being whispered. I tried to turn around, but I couldn't, and I was stuck, laying in my bed. The aura of it felt evil. It did not feel welcoming at all, and I started to have trouble breathing. I started to think in my head, repeating for it to leave. Then all of a sudden, I was able to move again, and I could breathe. Nothing has happened since, and I haven't told my mom or anyone else. If you have any idea what that could have been, please tell me. 
Maybe somebody showed up to the wrong house. Yeah, for real. No, that's scary though. What the f Don't like sometimes demons like pretend to be something? D words. D words? I mean, it's quite possible, but I, I'm not a medium. But she said so she felt the difference between them. Maybe How you did something bad and your grandma was like Ooh. punishing you or being mean to you. I look cute as f It's a jacket. So you're saying I look cute as f Um, do a level cleanse. Do a little sage thing. Be careful. Turn that shit off. <laughs> what pad? They're t maybe they were giving advice to the girls. Yeah. Hi, I recently found the video of your mom telling scary stories and I haven't stopped watching your channel since. And after watching your AVG video, I thought I would tell you my story. When I was younger, my sister, my two cousins, and I, I was about six or seven and was the youngest, would go around my nan's house whenever our parents were at work. She would let us sit in the living room and we would watch an old TV show called The Far Away Tree. One day I remember laying on the floor below the TV, coloring in with a blanket over me. My nan was cuddled up on the sofa with my sister and one of my cousins, while my oldest cousin was across the room on the sofa below the window. It was dark and raining outside and I'm pretty sure it was a thunderstorm. I looked out of the window and saw the ground shaking. Here in England we don't get earthquakes so that's out of the question. My nan lives in a closed cul-de-sac where there's only one road to get in and out. There's a turning that goes up a hill and at the top there's a small field above a tall wall where me and my cousins would often go to play and talk to the spirits we were so obsessed with. When I looked down this road I saw huge black shoes and long legs. One thing I find strange is that I never really saw it. I never really saw a face or clothing and I can't imagine what it would have looked like. This thing was huge. I couldn't even see above the waistline. My nan and sister had moved to the kitchen, completely oblivious to what was going on. My oldest cousin ran upstairs and my other cousin and I hid behind the sofa. The thing had shrunk down to fit inside the house, but it was still huge. It walked into the living room, stood there looking for us, and eventually pulled away the sofa. But it didn't hurt us. It just looked. I climbed out and ran upstairs to the guest bedroom. The room used to be my uncle's, where many of his and my dad's bad dreams took place, often involving a figure trying to find. I jumped onto the bed and pulled the covers over my head. My older cousin was hiding there too. The door swung open. The thing stood there waiting. I peeked out from under the cover, and that's when my memory goes blank. My granddad was always at work, so it wasn't him. My nan and sister were never interested in the supernatural. Maybe that's why they didn't notice anything, and didn't have to hide. I never spoken to my oldest cousin about this, but my other cousin said she remembers this too. I'm not sure if she's telling the truth, and I'm not sure how I'd feel if she was. My family always say it was a dream, but I find that hard to believe. One thing that solidified this being real for me is that down the road from my nan's house, outside a row of shops, there's a giant footprint in blue paint, the same color as the shop that was being painted at the time, and the footprint is still there to this day. I think some things may be exaggerated in my mind, but I don't think all of it was a dream. You want to read this in a British accent so we get a more real feel of the story? I've never spoken to my oldest cousin about this, but my other cousin said she remembers this too. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making videos and entertaining me every day from Kat. Thank you, Kat. Aww. Did you hear about all the giants stuff yeah, that they found? The evidence of the giants? Oh, the big ass footprint? They I need found to a big, ass foot big they, footprint. They found a big footprint. I don't know if that's real. I need to look that up. They I, found. Didn't they find skeletons or am I tripping? It was like a big old bone. There's apparently no scientific evidence to back up the possibility of giants roaming this earth. There are a bunch of pictures circulating the internet of the discovery of giant bones that are simply photoshopped. I did read an article by James Felton titled, Here's Why Science Says Giant Humans Have Never and Will Never Exist. Human bones wouldn't be able to support the weight of our bodies if we were giants. Our heart would have to work harder and our brains would be a lot slower. Not only that, but our eating habits would be unsustainable. So where do all these claims of giants existing come? from. Some tales can be blamed on the discovery of bones by ancient people who didn't have the knowledge we have today. Dinosaur bones could have easily been mistaken for those of a human, leading to stories of giants roaming earth long before us. Some people theorize that even the discovery of elephant bones, since they have such a similar structure to those of humans, and a large cavity in the middle of its skull, could explain cyclopses. I think so. Okay, let's do the thing where we guess numbers. Okay, ready? Okay. I'm gonna say one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. There. Okay. You had what? <laughs> <laughs> you know your eyes open. No, I didn't. I swear to God, I didn't. You're lying. I see your. I swear, I, <laughs> I swear to God, I didn't. I swear to God. 
Alrighty, thank you for the story, cat. That's really crazy and I believe you. When, remember a long time ago? I, I have this memory like engraved in me. I don't know where we were driving to. It might have been Arizona. When was this? A long ass time ago and our parents took us to like a restaurant that had a bunch of monkeys. Monkeys like the clapping monkeys and decorations like that. No? Oh, then I was just with Fabi, I guess. Fabi remembers this too. And I remember that day specifically. Like, I have a really bad memory, but I remember these monkeys, everything. There was monkeys everywhere. It was a restaurant. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask my parents. A strong ass fly touched my foot. Could you close your legs? I could barely sit on the bench because your legs are wide open. You're homophobic for that. Oh, yeah, we were walking to the car and Fabi had a flower, right? And she ripped it and then she put it back together. She said, like, You want to see a magic trick? And then she put it back together. Isn't that pretty huh. good? I think she just tricked you. You're like, What, five? Yeah. She probably had another flower under her hand or something. Maybe. Oh my god. I remember one time I breathed underwater. If you keep telling people that, they're going to the damn hospital. I swear to god. Did you really? Yes, I did. And I was under, it was like in the hot tub and I went underwater and I was breathing and I was like, what the hell? Like I breathed for like two seconds and I went up because I was like, what the fuck? And then I tried it again and it didn't work. It wasn't like an air bubble? Because it's a hot tub, we got an air bubble. Girl, no. What if it's like, have you heard of that? Like a glitch in the matrix type thing? You forget that you're not supposed to be able to do something but you do it anyway strangely enough i found a thread on reddit where people discuss glitches in the matrix one post claiming the user breathed underwater over 100 people have commented their similar if not identical experience a lot of them mentioned that after having realized what they've done to be impossible they can't do it anymore one comment on reddit says there are a lot of anecdotes like this that i have come across usually from when people were very young and they were able to do something impossible because they didn't know the rules of reality yet another user mentions it's possible for it to be the mammalian diving reflex. It's triggered by the sudden cooling of our face while holding our breaths, like when we jump into water. As a survival response, our bodies adapt to be able to tolerate a lower level of oxygen, allowing us to be submerged for a longer period of time. But this doesn't exactly explain the multiple accounts of people taking entire breaths underwater. It reminds me of the stories I've read about glitches in the matrix, of when someone is speaking or understanding a different language they don't even know, until they snap out of it and realize this isn't supposed to be happening. But it is in entirely possible there are things our human bodies are capable of that we haven't learned yet. Remember when we were, when we went to that thing and you walked into the hot tub in front of everybody? It wasn't even a hot tub party no, or I think pool that was party. You. No, it was you. It was you. And then I don't know, what I did is I went to the bathroom and I took a big ass sh and then it didn't flush. And then Nelly, when we were going out, the person whose house it was, Nelly was like, she took a sh and it didn't flush. I don't know what I said. I said, oh, there's nothing wrong with the bathroom. <laughs> and then she went to go check. We did not know these people. Every Why year. did you say there's nothing wrong with the Why bathroom? Why did you tell people that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um. That's a witch laugh. That's a weird ass this person very kindly said, hey, bitch, this is mine and my family's experience with Little Kitty Apple. In March 2018, my family was introduced to a lady that was a curandera. When we first met her, she said my mom had brujeria done on her. A little bit into us meeting her, my entire family went to sh**, and I mean sh**. I have an aunt that lives in Mexico. She visited us in June slash July. A little bit into her being here, we of course introduced her to the curantera. I'm gonna use her name now, Chayito or something like that. So basically Chayito said that she didn't like my aunt after meeting her. And my mom also said my aunt Irma was giving Chayito weird looks. And we later found out my aunt was talking hella shit about her. And my mom didn't like that, so my mom started talking shit about Irma, my aunt. A little bit after that fight, my mom and cousins started fighting literally out of nowhere and it ended very badly. We later ended up meeting a girl through the lady. She was young and she said she was going to Chayito because someone did brujeria on her in November 2018. Chayito, the curandera, said something about my grandma to my mom and of course my mom believed her and told my grandma but my grandma didn't believe her. In December 2018, my entire family was still barely talking. Now moving on to January 2019, I had issues with my school and me and my mom were talking about homeschooling me. Chayito found out and was in Annoyed. And one day as my mom was taking my older sister to school, Chayito came into my room. Mind we were home alone. She came into my room telling me that I was an ungrateful
ungrateful little girl. She said that she was gonna make my mom take me to an all-girls school. Mind you, she's kind of yelling at me while she's saying all of this BS. I told her she was stupid and to get out of my room. She left my room and when my mom came back, she acted like nothing happened. I walked into the living room and she smiled at me and was telling me how much she loved me. She used to always do that. Mind you, I was the closest to her in my family besides my mom, of course. January 26, 2019. We had a little gathering for my great grandma's birthday and she was there. Chayito and I were playing a game. It was a scary one, but it wasn't that scary. Chayito sat down right next to me and asked me what I was playing. I told her and she just stayed looking at the game and she later left the room. A couple of days later, a lot of shit happened out of nowhere. I literally started saying I was gonna K myself. Mind you, I've never been before so this was very concerning. I started acting out a lot like fighting with everyone. At some point my mom took the phone I had at the time and Chayito said I was being possessed by the game and that was the reason I was threatening to K myself. Every time they would tell me they were gonna take the phone. When I tell you I was shook, I was shook. I couldn't believe her. Obviously my mom believed her so I was banned from playing the game and one day she asked my mom if she could get a hotel to do cleanings on the other clients. My mom got her the hotel room and we went to the hotel and she immediately started saying she was gonna clean me and do a prayer for me. She had a candle and she put the a candle into this cigarette tray after she used it on me. We left the bathroom after that and my mom and her were talking about who she was gonna clean and as they were talking we heard a big boom like if something exploded. We freaked out and went into the bathroom and in the sink was the candle and the little tray she had put it on but it was like burnt but like really bad. The tray was broken and had like black stuff on it. There was glass all over the sink and after she cleaned it up she said it was my bad energy that made it happen. After that we had an event for the girl we met through her. A couple of days after that event we were told Chayito was lying to us about everything through another lady that was also a curandera. My mom and that girl were at a store and the girl snapped to another curandera she used to go to and ran to her and told her everything about Chayito. She said Chayito was lying and using us for money. <gasps> My mom and the girl obviously couldn't believe her. A little bit after that, we found out that she was lying to one of her customers. And I'm not talking a little lie, it was a big one. Everyone was of course pissed and my mom confronted her about it. And she said that the person who told my mom was lying and being dramatic. Obviously, my mom didn't believe her and that's when they continued fighting. At the end of March, we had officially cut lines with her and she was pissed. She kept trying to text my mom telling her people are lying to her and that she wouldn't do such a thing. Again, no one believed her and moved on. Anyways, moving on to 2020, my mom and cousin, the ones that fought really bad in 20. 2018 started talking again in October and one day my cousin brought up that my aunt from Mexico was telling my other aunt stuff about the lady and I believe she said that my aunt from Mexico and Chayito were talking even though they both didn't like each other and that's when it clicked. My aunt had sent that weird ass lady to do brujeria on everyone, mainly my mom and every time she was supposedly cleaning us she actually wasn't doing shit. We found out another lady would start the brujeria and Chayito would end it if that makes sense. We also found out that I was being the most manipulated out of everyone. She got closest to me to manipulate me which at that point wasn't a big shock to me. We also found out my aunt from Mexico did brujeria on my mom when my brother was born, which was in 2000. We found out that 20 years later, we would also find out the cause of my mom's stroke in 2015. It was a brujeria my aunt was doing on her. She wanted my mom to be paralyzed where you can't even speak. Thank God that never happened and my mom was healthy after it. After we stopped talking to Chayito, one thing she used to always tell us was that owls were bad and to throw away anything that had an owl on it. We obviously did that and we later found out that owls are protection from brujeria. Some, of course. And we found out more, but the rest it's private but yeah that's it you can share it if you want to i don't care you emailed it to us yeah <laughs> love you and your youtube channel babe love you too are you an aries or leo Fuck. that's crazy that is so scary dude that was a good story that was a really good story someone should make a movie out of that dude can you imagine i know rebecca would have brujeria done to her and then she did the candle to get to reverse the curse do you remember that it was mm -hmm. black as hell? A lot of women in Mexico will curse the women that their husbands cheat on them with, but stay with a man. Girl, you don't need a candle, you need therapy. There's this book, Adult Children of Emotionally Immature Parents, that all of us Mexican Americans should read. <laughs> Yes. Imagine the betrayal. I wish it would have given like a reason. Like, did she just hate her, her she sister? Hate her. Cause she had money. She would help her out financially. Remember? Don't with me. Oh my yeah. god. Please protect us. <laughs> oh, I haven't found this lady's YouTube channel who shows how she does brujería and she shows her customers of her doing it. Cause she's like, oh, porque todas las otras brujas nada más les dicen que lo hacen pero nunca enseñan que hacen. And she would have like a frog and she would like stuff them inside a doll. Like she would put raw meat in the doll's head and like dead frogs and like dirt. And like she'd be like, oh, necesitan como ashes de una casa que se quemó pero alguien se tenía que morir adentro de esa casa. She would have that. Very like, she would say what the things were for. If it was like putting it in their head, it would be like, oh, so they could have bad thoughts. So they're really doing this and that. And like, or the rana or something like that. So everything they say is a lie and like things like that. They did that to you? 
The last one? No. Everything you say is a lie? Yeah, Libra. you're the best person in the world. Your hat looks like a tongue. Oh, I, w I was watching this one YouTuber because I was looking for clips and this guy goes to like um, graveyards in Mexico and he looks for brujeria like buried in places. What there was one. Them? Well, he just opens them and like, destroys them basically. But he does Whoa. like, he like makes fun of it. Like he's so stupid. I do not recommend you do that because um, sometimes it can go very bad. Like I don't judge brujas, but like if you do brujeria, like do it on people that like deserve it. Deserve that shit. Girl, it's curse your boyfriend. You never get ever again. That's like the worst curse. This one bruja, she would like show how she did like every time if he ever cheats or if he ever gets for another woman that his Pause. name burns. Why are you looking at these? No, they're on my for you page. Oh. Yeah. Oh, he also found a pad. It was a pad, like a used pad. And it had a picture of a guy like face down into the pad and it was like sewn into it. Like, that this is, is weird. He said in Bano Chalo. <laughs> Hi Monica, I would like to stay anonymous. I live in Las Vegas, but I'm originally from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. <laughs> I met my husband seven years ago at work, ever since we've been inseparable. When I first met him, I had no idea he sees dead people until one night on our way back from a party. It was around three in the morning. My husband was driving and all of a sudden he moved the car left and right as if he was trying not to hit something he saw in front of him. There's a, in a the car, there's a steering wheel and you move it left and right in the same. So left and right? You don't have, you don't have your license? Oh, you don't have any bitches, so... I got mad at him and screamed, what the F? When I looked at him, he was pale white. His eyes were wide open and I asked if he was okay. He said, did you see the guy? I said, what guy? Then he told me that I won't believe him if he told me. I said, tell me what? He goes on with the story. His grandma was a witch and she would practice witchcraft. When he was a little baby, his grandma grabbed him from his cradle in the middle of the night. When it was morning, his mom woke up and was looking for him. Nowhere to be found, she went to his shed out in the backyard. That's where his grandma practiced witchcraft. His mom grabbed him. Ever since that day, my husband grew up seeing kids playing in his house but nobody else sees them he sees dead people floating outside after 12 p.m this is why we don't like to go out at night anymore i told his mom and she told me a lot of crazy stories that has happened to her and her family especially in the house where they live right now that is so sad i, I thought that he was about to be sacrificed or something and like his mom saved him hello again how has everything been i read your story yesterday hello again how has everything been i'm glad you started posting once again because you don't post ever and you're annoying for that and you're dumb wow saludos to everyone hearing this story this took place a long time ago when my grandpa was still a young teen in Mexico. He said a lot of brujos tend to follow him around a lot. In one of the stories that took place in Mexico, he had gone out for business reasons and it was late at night. Usually, he would take this specific route in the woods at day, but would refuse to go at night. Though since it was dark already, he had to take it, mostly because the other routes espantaban. As he was walking through the trees, he said he saw this huge pig wandering around. He was confused to why one would be out and about, and even more confused because he had never seen it around. Everyone knew each other back then. <laughs> Everyone was a farm animal? Yeah. Oh, is this back at the barnyard? <laughs> He didn't think too deep into it and thought it had probably been shipped out but then escaped. He did think of taking it home but in the end decided to leave it at that. He mentioned how the pig looked like it was trying to find something. Odd but whatever. He proceeded on with his route and came across the pig again. Nothing happened other than it would walk away, come back and would get in his way over and over again. At this point my grandpa was mad and upset. The pig eventually wouldn't budge or move and stayed in front of him not letting him go any further. Now quick note, my grandpa was really good at killing animals. You know, the stiparlo and whatever for dinner. Ooh, why did I say it like that? At this point, he had forgotten he had this long knife on him and immediately took it out. Just like that, the pig turned around and eyed the knife and ran so fast. He said he could hear the desperation in the pig when it wheezed and oinked like if it knew what was going down. Grandpa had no shame and was still pissed, so he ran after it and sliced him deep enough from the side. The pig wheezed again and kept running while Grandpa kept cussing it out as it ran off. He said it was so weird how the pig just knew what was going on immediately when the old man took the weapon out. How real its eyes lit up and booked it out of there and knowing it was going get hurt which is so unusual still mad grandpa went home and told his dad about what had happened and how a pig wouldn't leave him alone his dad said it was probably a witch coming after him and what he did was the best thing to do the next day my grandpa was just chilling and a friend of his came up to him let's call him pepe pepe went and told my grandpa i saw you last night in the woods it looked like you were desperate or something my grandpa replied and told him what had happened last night pepe said si sí, si sí, ya se no te vayas a asustar por lo que te voy a decir he told my grandpa he was the pig he came across last night he said the only reason 
reason he blocked his way was because his wife was on the side cleaning herself in a river and kept people out of the route by scaring them off. He apologized for what he did and told him he wouldn't hurt or touch him and that if he ever saw him again, to ignore him and just pass by or go a different way. To prove his claim, he lifted up his shirt. There it was, a huge scar on the side of his body, the same place he hit the pig. My grandpa, not having it once again, threatened to kill him if he ever did that again. Deadass, he wasn't taking anyone's back in the day. Mood. Bruh, why would he be- I would have been like a tiger or something. For Is, real? Was his wife pig? a pig too or something? Maybe they were like a boar or something. Oh, a boar. Okay. Boars are scary. They'd be charging at you. I was like in my lifetime, like when I when I'm like 90 years old, a uh, little weak, like uh, about to die. Is that bad to say? I would like for an, a soccer to appear in front of you before you die. Oh, never mind. No, I take that back. So did they haunt your family? Just because you're manifesting? Them? No. I take that back. <laughs> for, Wait. I don't want it to happen, <laughs> but it would be cool to see an ass walker shift. How does that happen? But well, I don't want to see it. Somebody let me know if they've seen it. That's, yeah. that's what I'll say. There was also a short story, which is about someone my dad literally knows. Basically, there were four drunk men at night having a blast and whatever. They were minding their own time until they spotted an ostrich. I don't know, man. I've never seen ostriches in Mexico. So anyways, they saw this huge ostrich passing by. And well, the drunk men went and grabbed it by the neck and beat it down. They wanted to kill it and use it for a meal. The drunk men ended up hurting the poor ostrich's leg. Though it was too heavy to carry, they left it there to die so someone else could take it. The next day, no one could ever find the ostrich, nor did anyone speak of it. After that, a man, let's call him Ray, an old buddy of my dad, came out limping by the leg. This man was always healthy and never limped before, but suddenly didn't want to tell anyone about his leg or what had happened. He always dismissed it, which led people to speculate him to be the ostrich. After that, they would spot the ostrich here and there with a limping leg too. That's the only stories I could get out of my dad. What the heck? Wait, that was it? Yeah. Wow. I would have kissed it as a pet. Bro, they wanted to eat it? Where was their first reaction to eat it? Well, maybe they're hungry. Cuentos de ostrich. I've seen people eat ostrich eggs. Insert a clip of an ostrich egg. I that think is story crazy. Was, yes. If anybody scary. has ever witnessed somebody shifting into an animal, let me know. I want to know what it looks yes. like. I wonder what their intentions are to be walking around like that. Like the ostrich guy? Like, what is he doing? For funsies? Yeah. What would I you would be? I would be a... Okay, you guess what I'll be and I'll guess what you'll be. You'd be a bear. Yeah. What would I be? You would be... Um... Animal say doesn't a have hippo, a license. I swear to God. Oh. I would be a cat. That's literally what I was gonna <laughs> say. I would be um, a devour. Devour these nuts? These nuts. Alright, everybody download Squitchcraft from the link in the description. You can help the channel out. Beep boop boop. Press buttons. Claim. Interact. For good luck. And let me know who the f got Lydia's ass.